Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Because of you, it is well. Hallelujah. With all of us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. What a what a magnificent Savior. Praise God. Hallelujah, Lord. Nothing is too great for him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. It is well with my soul, with my emotions, with my feelings, with my thoughts. Praise God. It's always good with our spirit. It's perfect. Amen. It's this soul we got to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Amen. And he's promised us that it can be well. Amen. With our soul. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a big hand. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. Thank you, Jody. Great job this morning. Thank you, Peter, Tammy, and Jody for leading us in worship. And thank all of you, amen, for sharing this morning. And uh, I, I really appreciate it. And uh, praise God. Okay. Praise the Lord. I forget which way I'm flipping my switch there sometimes. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. And uh, thanks again. I, uh, everything that was said this morning just reaffirms uh, what God is speaking to me to uh, minister this morning. And uh, so I'm grateful for that. And I know that the things that you shared are beneficial to one another. Yes. Everybody's going through stuff, you know. Yes. And, and sometimes you think it's only... Well, I'm going through this, and I, I'm going to say this, uh, and, and and it can be helpful for you, but I promise you, somebody else needs to hear it too. It, it, it is touching somebody else. Amen. So thank the Lord for that. Praise God. Amen. God is good. Happy New Year, 2019. Amen. And uh, moving on. Praise God. I can't. I, I just. I'm thinking back when I was a kid in the 50s and 60s. 2019. That was like science fiction. Yeah, it really was. It was just like they, they made movies about 2024 or something, you know, and they were, it was like another lifetime away, you know, so praise the Lord. Well, for, amen. for what it's worth, praise the Lord. Here we are in sci-fi land. Praise the Lord. <laughs> praise God. Speaking of uh, tourism, did somebody say that? Uh, there was an American tourist who went to France, and uh, he wanted to visit uh, the Notre Dame Cathedral, you know, and, and so he spoke to the caretaker there, and he said, you know, I've come all the way from America to hear those cathedral bells ring. And uh, the caretaker said, well, unfortunately, the bell's broken. It has no clapper inside of it. And the only way to hear it ring is you have to pull the rope, and when the bell starts to sway, you put your head inside the bell, and your head will serve as a clapper. So the tourist did, as he was told, he's an American. Yeah. 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 So he did what he was told, and, but he tugged the bell's rope so hard that the bell began to sway back and forth with you know, tremendous speed, and the tourist put his head inside, and as the bell came by with this terrible speed, the bell actually forced the swinging bell to push him over the railing, and he fell four stories to his death. Well, a crowd gathered around to see the dead tourist. The, the caretaker ran out, and uh, a policeman came by and came up to the caretaker, and he said, do you know who this man is? And the caretaker said, no, but his face rings a bell. <laughs> oh, I'm not done. Because a few years later, this victim's twin brother decides he wants to go and see his brother's last place that he visited. And, and so he goes to Notre Dame Cathedral and he approaches the same caretaker and he asks him, he said, can I hear that famous cathedral bell chime? And the caretaker said, well, the, the bell is broken and there's no clapper inside of it. However, if you pull the rope and make the bell swing, you can put your head inside when it comes by and you'll be able to hear the chime. And the tourist a twin brother, obviously, did as he was told. However, like his twin brother, he pulled the rope with too much force, and when it came by, he inserted his head into the belt, and he too was knocked over the railing and fell to his death. 
And as his broken body lies on the ground there in the pavement, crowd gathers, a policeman comes up to the caretaker again. He says, do you know this man? And the caretaker took a quick look and replied, nobody's a dead ringer for his brother. <laughs> Are you feeling it now? Praise the Lord. (laughs) Hallelujah. God's in a good mood all the time. Praise the Lord. Okay, I want to, uh, uh, because of what I'm uh, going to share with you this morning, I want to kind of recap last week's uh, message. I I don't want to get too deep into it, but for those of you that weren't here, it will help to kind of set up what I want to talk to you about today. But I mentioned that uh, in college 101 you know the uh, psychology 101 I took several psychology courses because I felt like I was really messed up I was right and the more I learned about psychology the more I realized how messed up I was praise the Lord it's kind of one of those paranoid deals you know you're not paranoid if you know everybody's out to get you that kind of stuff but anyway uh, no I just had a fascination with it I took a course on uh, Psychology of the criminally insane, and uh, I don't know, two or three other ones. But the basic uh, psychology 101, they taught uh, this uh, theory of the hierarchy of human needs. It was a guy by the name of Abraham Maslow who actually promoted this back in the 40s, and it was taught in most all psychology courses. And, uh, and he used a pyramid as a graph to, to show how this works. And so at the base of this pyramid, the very foundational or fundamental aspect of this, is the physiological needs, which is health, food, sleep, water, you know, just the basic things that every human being would have to have, the needs that you have to have met, okay? Then on the next level was the uh, shelter from, uh, you know, the elements or, or freedom from danger. That would be the next level. Then the next level is belonging, is... Uh, Love, affection, being part of a family or a group of some kind. Amen? And then the next level is esteem. Self-esteem, the esteem of others. And finally, at the very top of this uh, hierarchy of human needs, at the very pinnacle of it, is uh, self-actualization, which is basically reaching or achieving your full potential. Okay? Now, he says... This is the need that everybody has. Every human being has these needs, okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, actually, uh, if, if the Bible talks about, look at the birds, you know. He says uh, uh, they, they don't have to spin or they don't do anything. And they're fed. The, the Lord feeds them. Look at the lilies. They neither toil nor spin, but they're clothed more beautifully, you know, than Solomon with all of his wealth and so on and so forth. They, all of their needs are taken care of. Uh, by the Lord. So he says, seek first at the end of that uh, monologue, he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness or his way of doing things and all these other things, all the other needs that we have will be met. Okay, so uh, the needs that we just identified, they build progressively. And I I mentioned that uh, what I understood from that is that that agrees with the Bible. And that's not normal for psychologists to identify with anything scriptural. So it wasn't intentional. It's just he had this thing and he develops this theory. And the theory is a fundamental Bible teaching. So uh, he didn't say anything about God's going to meet all your needs, but he just says this is the way life is. This is the way it has to work to be successful, right? right? These needs have to be met in order for people to be successful. So the needs that I identified there... They build progressively, and that's why he used the pyramid as a graph kind of to show you that they, grow, they begin with the very fundamental things of just what sustains life, you know, food, water, sleep, so forth. So he, he starts there, and they build progressively because they depend on one another. Uh, for example, if you take, take uh, poverty, someone who's not doesn't have a place to sleep, who doesn't have food, who doesn't have water, it, they're going to have a tough time ever having any self-esteem, sure. right? They're not going to, it's going to be hard for them to be a part of a group, part of a family, part of a, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
so that they all work together. If you don't have the very fundamental stuff, then obviously you're not even going to live. But then on the next level, it just keeps building, and these things all work together, okay? So God knows that we have physical needs. He knows that we have psychological needs. Right. We talk about, he talks about the soul, you know, the, the needs for the soul, amen? And he knows that uh, he designed us with spiritual needs, right. which is where the psychologists drop the ball. Yeah. They're only talking about physical needs. They're not talking yeah. about the, the spiritual needs. And so here's what God is saying. In order to reach the pinnacle, in, in order to, to have all things met and to have your needs met and for you to be, uh, reach your full potential or self-actualization, you've got to have God. Yes. You can have all the other stuff and still never reach your full potential as a human being because without God, it's impossible to do that. Amen. That's why the world is in the mess that it's in, because it's trying to satisfy everything without God. It's getting all the needs, all the stuff, all the things are there, but God's not added to it. And so it's just hollow. It's empty. And it doesn't satisfy. All of us have this desire, amen, for that main thing. And we try to fill it. I talked about building our own kingdoms, and that's what, that's what we do. We develop our own kingdoms. We call it you can call it whatever you want to, self-preservation or whatever. And so we come up with our own little gimmicks to protect ourselves from other people, protect ourselves from rejection, protect ourselves from, you know, broken relationship, whatever it might be. Right. We use other things to meet those needs, yeah. right? Money could be money, could be anything. Right. And none of those things individually are wrong. They're just bad because when we use them to meet that ultimate need, they never work. Right. They never get you to that place. They never get you to satisfaction. So in order for us to reach uh, self-actualization or uh, full potential, we need the things. But most of all, we need God. Yes. Amen. Amen. With all those things and not God, you'll never get to the full potential that God designed a human being to have and to experience. Amen. Everybody wants security. Everybody wants significance. Everybody wants a purpose. Amen. We all crave a happy life, a meaningful yes. life, a life that has some value to it and some impact, amen, some way or another. That's exactly what Satan was offering to Jesus, an alternative kingdom. Yeah. Look at all the kingdoms. I'll give you everything. Yeah. All things will be yours. You'll have all the money. You'll have all the power. You'll have all the, the awe of the world. But you won't have God. And Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone. If I don't have God, the rest of this stuff is absolutely meaningless. He just came back with, seek first the kingdom of God. The other stuff will take care of itself. Amen? So we build our own kingdoms. Everybody builds a kingdom. Everybody. If we think of a kingdom, just think of it as a way of organizing life. A way to make sense of the world. A way to protect ourselves. Physically, a way to protect ourselves psychologically. It's a way of living that we set up and we run ourselves. Yep. Now, here's the deal. We come to the Lord, but we still got our own little kingdom going. Yep. Amen? We've, we've developed ways of dealing with life. Right. Because it's, we're in charge. And we like to be in charge. We want control, right, of our life. Praise the Lord. It's bad. I mean, this is the sick. Hey, John. Remember the 60s when we went looking for ourselves? <laughs> I know John went looking. I bumped into him somewhere around out there, but I don't really remember because it, it was in the 60s. But I'm just saying, what were we doing? We were trying to develop a kingdom. Our own kingdom. Our own way of perceiving life and dealing with life and living life. That's what it was all about. That's what... The whole stupid trip was about. Yeah, yeah. And finally, one day, we came to the Lord and realized, man, that was a waste of 10 years that I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So in a personal kingdom, we are in control. Yes. You get enough money, get a big enough reputation, have enough relationships, because they won't last, so you have to have a lot of them to you know, keep you going, to keep you feel, feeling accepted and, yeah. and valued, and you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, importance, 
winning, having influence. Uh -huh. That's how we articulate a kingdom. That's how we make it. And once we've constructed a kingdom, we cling to it yep. and we defend it. Because it's our kingdom. Yes, it's what we've established our way of living, our way of coping and dealing with life. Amen? Yes. So our kingdom works for a while because it seems to deliver what it is we want. Mm -hmm. If it's, you know, I'm going to go out and discover the universe and find myself and, and all this, you know, free love, get high, stay high, yeah. you know, all the stuff that was going on. Six. It's just one example, but I'm saying right. we all had our thing. It just happened to be that was the one. That I could identify with maybe a little clearer, but the truth is, they never last. Our kingdoms never last. Right. They can't because they're built on earthly values. Right. They're built on us. Exactly. And because we're frail and faulty, they don't stand up. It looks like they are at first because we're getting something that we want. But pretty soon we find out the thing that we want isn't really what we wanted. We wanted something more than that. But that thing was satisfying that hunger or that desire or that need or whatever for a while. Yes. Until you realize, you come to the place where you realize that really isn't it. So we go looking for another it yes. or another thing or another something because we know deep down inside there's still this right. emptiness. There's still this longing. There's still this lack. Amen. And so we keep on keeping on, and pretty soon uh, problems start coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, our kingdom collapses uh -huh. because our lives change. They change because of choices. They change because of difficulties. They change because of tragedies. They change because of accidents. They change because of people. They change because of pressure. And that's when our kingdom falls. The frailty of our kingdom is exposed in yes. those circumstances and those situations. Why? Because it is not well with my soul. No. Right. My kingdom, it isn't all well in my kingdom. Right. I'm finding there's flaws in it. There's weaknesses. Right. There's, there's things that just won't do what it is I have to have done. Right. Amen. Right. And so life reaches out and my potential is not met. Right. And hopefully... When that kingdom comes crashing down, I'll recognize this other kingdom. Right. Yes. yes. And then I can exchange my kingdom yes. for his kingdom. Yes. That's what being born yes. again is about. Yes. The problem yes. is we just add his kingdom to our kingdom most of the time. Yeah. Which means we're saved and we're going to heaven, but we still got all the same yeah. flaws. We still rely on those things. Yeah that are frail, right. that collapse. We just won't let go mm -hmm. and let God. Right. Think about this. And I, I looked at a bunch of these, but I'll just name these three just for quick examples. The woman at the well. Her kingdom was built on the fact that she could attract men to herself. That met her needs. That gave her safety. That gave her security. That gave her shelter. It gave her a sense of esteem because somebody wants me. But they kept collapsing. Yes. But she kept starting another kingdom right. based on the same right. flaw. I mean, come on, we've all got these things that I'm just using these. Yeah. These are there in the Bible for a reason. Right. How about the rich young ruler? Right. Everything was his money. Yeah. That's why Jesus dealt with his money, not to humiliate the guy. Same way with the woman of the well. Where's your husband? Yeah, I've got, I, I don't have a husband. No, you're right. You've had five husbands, and the guy you're living with is not your husband. Yeah. The rich young ruler. Give all you've got. What does he do? He attacks his kingdom. Yes. Not the man. It wasn't about his money. It was the fact that his money was his world. It was his kingdom. It was what he depended on. It's how he found value in himself. It's how he gave himself esteem. It's how he felt like he could reach his full potential. But they didn't because they wouldn't have asked the questions they asked. You see what I mean? The, the prodigal son is a perfect example. He thinks, here's the kingdom. He's like the 60s guy. Give me a little money. Get me on the road. And there's a party going on somewhere. Right. And I'll get in it. You know, I'll, I'll find a commune. I'll find some place where all the things that I think are going to satisfy right. me and, and make me feel happy and good are going to be there. Mm. What's he find out? Well, it worked for a while until yeah. he ran out of money. Yeah. And he ran out of friends. Yeah. 
and he ran out of parties. Yeah. And now he's in a pig pen eating slop, eating stuff that the hogs won't even eat. Right. And he comes to and remembers his father's kingdom. Right. In my father's kingdom, right. the slaves live better than this. Yep. Yeah. So he goes home. He exchanges kingdoms. Yeah. That's the type of the fact that in all of us, we were in Christ before the foundation of the world. So in all of us, there is this sense or this awareness of heaven, of God, of a, right. of a perfect kingdom. Because we came out from him. Yes, right. Then he redeems us back. So there's something in everybody. Yes. The scripture even talks about it. Everybody knows there's a God. Yes. And maybe not intellectually, but inside there's this hunger. There's yes. this longing. There's this desire. There's this sense that if I could just find this one thing... It'll be the answer. Yeah. But they're never willing to exchange the kingdoms. Right. Sometimes the best thing that can happen, see, it's the love of God that draws men to repentance, but for the, what I've found, for the most part, it's, it's our collapsing kingdoms that cause us to turn to God. Right. It isn't his love, it's our desperation because we just blow it. Amen? Yeah. So Jesus goes about and he's preaching the kingdom everywhere he goes. And he talks like, we already know about the kingdom. As if, you know, he knows that this message of the kingdom is going to resonate with us. It's going to connect to a needy place in us. Mm -hmm. When he starts talking about the kingdom of God, he knows that there's that need in each and every one of us. Right. And he's saying, if I can just touch that spot, right. they'll turn. Yes. They'll be willing to give up yes. their kingdom to receive oh. the Father's kingdom. So our homesickness for our lost spiritual birthplace is what he's dealing with. And he presents heaven as our real home. Yes. And of course that explains our subconscious need to build kingdoms. Right. Because we are, we have dominion, we have authority yes. to rule and reign. Yes. It's innate, it's in every human being. And that's what we try to do, but we do it without the spirit. Right. And we create inferior kingdoms as a result of it. Right. And so we're trying to reconstruct the reality of heaven buried in our subconscious, a place where all my needs are met, Amen. where I'm at peace, Amen. where I'm happy, where I'm fulfilled, Amen. right? Where I've reached my full potential. That's what goes on. That's what the world, that's what we're seeing that is everywhere. It. That is it. So without spiritual intervention, we end up with inferior kingdoms. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Individually and collectively. Sure. Yeah. And so we avoid the kingdom of God by doing that. The one place where we actually do have dominion, yeah, right. where we do have authority, right. but we avoid reaching our self-actualization or our full potential because we never reach out to that. Right. That's true of nations. It's true of individuals. Of course they'll collapse. Because the reason this nation has lasted as long as it has and came and come so close to reaching its full potential is because we had the kingdom of God as the goal or as the yeah. kind of uh -huh. landmark. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's yeah. this nation was founded, as what Don said, as we were growing up. Uh, mm. You know, that was, not, that was normal yeah. right. to talk about the Bible. Teachers taught from the Bible. Yes. They talked to you about the Bible. They had teachers that prayed for us. Yes. No embarrassment, no sense of, no. you know, awkwardness or anything else. It was just normal. It was, it was just what you do, you know. Right. So, he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done yes. on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I said that he wasn't just talking about planet earth. We've talked about this and read about this all. Adam is of the earth, mm -hmm. earthy. Mm -hmm. So when he's talking about heaven, you know, come, thy kingdom come on my earth yes. Yes. as it is in heaven. Yeah. Yes. That's because if it doesn't come on my earth, it doesn't make a bit of difference if it comes to this earth. Right. Right. That's true. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't change anything unless people are changed. Right. Yes. So that's, he's dealing with people. He's not just talking about bringing a geographic location up there someplace down here. He's talking about the effects of that kingdom come on this earth, on me, praise the Lord. Okay, so now we'll start 
Amen. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse uh, thirteen through eighteen. So we're talking about self-actualization or reaching our full potential as human beings. Because without that, everything around us yeah. is less than it's supposed to be. Exactly. So if the church never reaches its full potential, right. this is going to have the impact that it's supposed to have. Exactly. The impact that it does have will be flawed. Yeah. True. Amen? We are the church. Yes, amen. So... And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look at the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the self or into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, if you could, if, can you go back to verse 16, Peter? Sure. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Yeah. Okay? Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So turning to the Lord is, you know, turning to his kingdom. Paul, see, Paul's not talking about uh, here, be not conformed to this world. He's not talking about sin. In the context that he's speaking here, he's, he's not talking about being worldly, you know, like we used to think of in you know, traditional Pentecost, that everything that's fun is worldly and yeah. so therefore it's sin. That's not what he's talking about. The message is transformation. Something that changes you from the inside out. What religion does is change you from the outside, tries yeah. to change you from the outside in, which yeah. never works. Yeah. It's just like our kingdoms right. that we right. establish. They never reach the place that God's really trying to deal with. So religion operates the same way the average human being does. It tries to create a kingdom, but it tries to do it from the outside in by, by doing things to the flesh or to the natural person, thinking that that's going to change it. But it rarely ever reaches the heart. So there's no real transformation. There's just conforming. So we just conform to the group that we're with, and it makes us feel like we're part of something. And so we, we're getting our family. We're getting our group together. It gives us self-esteem. It gives us all the things that we're looking for. But it doesn't give us the one thing that we're really looking for. Right. That's why we get frustrated with religion so on and so forth. So when you factor in all the ways that the New Testament proclaims and explains the kingdom of God, it's the reign of God that we're talking about. That's what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is the reign of God, the manifest presence of God, the sovereignty of God, where God yes. rules, where God yes. is in charge, where God yes. is the source, God is the end all and the be all. Praise yes. the Lord. So it's not a place. It's not an institution. It's a status. Yeah. The kingdom is a status. Praise the Lord. It's a dynamic reality. It's, yes. it's, we exist in this kingdom it's yes. because we are kings. We are yes. sons and daughters. Amen. Yes. We are in a kingdom. We, we are in this, this sovereign ruling reign. Amen. Of God. Yes. Amen. And so the kingdom of God is God's system or God's order or God's way of doing things. Exactly. God's righteousness. Exactly. Amen. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are God's way of doing things. In Jesus. Yes. Amen. So because of that, because it's, it, 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 it's identified in spiritual terms generally, it's easy then to spiritualize the kingdom or to misinterpret the kingdom or metaphorize it, if you will, or any number of ways of trying to make it, you know, kind of symbiotic with those things makes it intangible or makes it unreal to us. It makes it kind of just flaky, just out there kind of. 60-ish. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Kind of just, you know, 
yeah, it's cool, man, and, but, you know, can't quite get there. And it makes it intangible. It makes it not, it makes it seem unreal. It makes it seem less likely to be possible. Amen. But the thing is, it's not a symbolic kingdom. Any more than Jesus was a symbolic king or is a symbolic king. He's real, so the kingdom has to be real. Amen. And that's why Jesus came. Not just to forgive our sins. That was just in the way. He had to deal with that to get us back into the kingdom. It wasn't, sin was not the big deal. It just was a deal. The big deal was getting us back to where we were supposed to be in the first place. Get us back to God. And the way to do that, you had to deal with the sin first. So he came, and he came to make the reign of God present, to make it vitally present, to make it really real, to make it actually true. Amen? Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 6 through 8. Now, thinking about the influence of the church, when will all this stuff happen? I'll tell you what will happen. It will happen when the church has the ability to do what the church is supposed to do. Yes. Because if the church isn't functioning the way the church is supposed to function, when the crap hits the fan, it's going to be a lot worse than anything we've ever imagined. Because if we don't deflect it, if we don't have some way of combating it, it, it see, except, he said, except, uh, you know, the days were shortened, even the very elect would be yeah. deceived. Yeah. So something has to happen for us right. to bring this thing to a place where we can have an impact. Right. Otherwise, we won't be any better off than, than the rest. And we know that's not the case. So something has to take place. So when they therefore were come together, they asked him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father hath put in his own power. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So <laughs> Jesus is telling them and therefore telling us, he is, in fact, going to restore the kingdom, the sovereignty of God, the rule of God, the reign of God. Our full potential, our self-actualization, our being God-like, our being children of God. Amen. And he's going to do it through a people full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The time and the season, he said, no man knows. Right? Right? The time and the season is up to us. That's why nobody knows it. And your time and your season may not be my time and my season. You see what I'm saying? God knows, but no man knows. We can know it when it happens. God knows. It's just like, see, you were saved from the foundation of the world. You didn't know it until you got saved. But God knew it from the very beginning. Right? This is the same kind of language. The kingdom, it comes. But nobody really knows until it comes. God knows, but no other individuals know. And that's what Jesus is telling them. He's, he, he's saying, look, no man knows the time or this place. And then he goes on to say, but you're going to receive power. After that, the Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, has come upon you. Same as Jesus, Christ in you, the hope of glory. These are all synonymous terms. And you will be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. The whole world. Praise the Lord. It's got to happen. And it's up to us when it happens. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, 47 through 50. 1 Corinthians 15, 47 through 50. First man is of the earth, earthy. Second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Mm -hmm. 
And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Praise the Lord. So here, here's, here's the deal. We're all born into this world. Yeah. We all have our own kingdoms. Yeah. It's the way it is. Yeah. But he said you can't enter into his with yours. Yeah. Right. Amen. So you have to bear the image of the heavenly. Right. You've got to let go of yours to get his. Right. When you do that, it, it's here. It, it, it invades. It, it takes over. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And that's why it says you, the, the, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because flesh and blood operates by its own kingdom. Yeah, right. That's how it functions. Praise yeah. the Lord. John 3.31. So it's not just what we turn to. It's turning to, when you turn to the Lord or turn to his kingdom. It's what you're turning loose of at the same time. Because yeah. you can't have both kingdoms. It's like a double-minded man, unstable right. in all of his ways. You get yeah. the benefit of neither one. Yeah. So he that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. So he's using the same language to show us this separation. Yes. All right. James chapter 3, 11 through 18. So I'm not talking about the issue of going to heaven or being lost. I'm talking about the kingdom coming here, not us going there. Right. That's a settled thing. That was settled the moment you accepted Christ. Right. But if you want the kingdom of God yes. to reign here, yes. you've got to give up something. Yes. You've got to give up yes. your kingdom to get His kingdom. Yes. It, it doesn't change your no. destination in eternity, no. but it will determine the destination of eternity yes. now yes. or the heavenly on the earth. So does a, foundation, or does a fountain send forth at the same time sweet water and bitter water? Now see, for years I'd read these scriptures and I'm thinking he's saying, okay, you can't be saved and do bad stuff. Because it kind of looks that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Can you be godly and ungodly? At the, of course you can. We yeah. do. We, you know, yeah. we just are. So does a fountain send forth at the same time? place sweet water and bitter. He's talking kingdom talk here. He's talking about the kingdoms. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and a dude with knowledge among you? Wisdom. Yes. Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife, what is that? That's, that's what happens in our kingdoms. Yes. When we don't get what we want, mm -hmm. or we get rejected, or we get put down, or we don't, people don't esteem us, or, or, or you know, right. treat us with respect, or whatever, we get bitter. Yeah. Envy. Strife develops yeah. Yeah. in your hearts. Glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly. It's sensual. It's devilish. Yes. The things that make sense, you know, it's like turn the other cheek kind of stuff. It makes, it, you just think, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. I don't think so. Right. You know, because you're yeah. not going to push me around. That's you know, right. you're not going to take advantage yeah. of me. Yeah. Wisdom descendeth not from above, but sensely earth, earthly, so forth. For where, where envying and strife is, there is confusion in yes. every evil work. Uh -huh. How many of you know that to be true? That is true. You get to bickering yeah. with your spouse or with whatever, and yeah. it's strife. Yes. The next thing you know, that thing can escalate into God knows what. I mean, it yeah. can turn into anything. Yes. And, and a lot of times you look back and you think, I don't even know what the hell that was about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't even yeah. know what yeah. triggered it. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Sorry if I'm exposing myself here this morning. <laughs> but the wisdom that's from above is, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness, God's way of doing things, is sown in peace of them that make peace. Yeah. 
we're talking about the differences in these kingdoms. Yes. All right? Yes. So the kingdom, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Remember, earth here is not just a planet that he's talking about. Right. Earth is us. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right? Because that's what he died for. For us to bear the kingdom. For us to experience the kingdom. For us to promote the kingdom. For us to spread the kingdom. All right. Daniel chapter 2. Verse 44 through 47. Daniel has a vision of this. Of this coming of Christ. Of the kingdom coming in Christ. And that's what he's talking about. In the days of these kings, the kings that are ruling. Yeah. Amen? Satan is the king of the air. We are kings of our kingdoms. Yeah. Right? Because we're in charge. We make them up. We, we, we yeah. rule them. We have control. That's why we like them. Because yeah. we can define them. Yes. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Uh -huh. Which shall never be destroyed. Ours are being destroyed constantly and then be re rebuilt. Another inferior one and another one and another one. Which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all of these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. That's what we're talking about in the end times. When are the end times? Well, whenever we wake up to the kingdom. For as much as they, thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands... And that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. In the context of Daniel's proclamation here, the arrival of a new kingdom mm -hmm. that's never going to be destroyed is an earth-shattering event. Yeah. It'll rock the world. Yes. Praise the Lord. The arrival of a new kingdom that'll never be destroyed is an earth-shattering event. Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. You talk about revival. That's what God calls revival. Not these things we get together and shout for a while. He's talking about something that will change the world. Yes. The breaking in of God's kingdom will smash to pieces all the earth's other kingdoms, bringing them to an end. Uh -huh. Now that's a pretty violent image, imagery, actually, if you think about it. And it carries over into the Gospels. Amen? This stone that comes out, it's going to crush all these other kingdoms, right? Uh -huh. Look at Matthew chapter 21, verse 42 through 44. Jesus said unto them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. So the rock imagery here is all through Jesus' teachings. If you build your life on me, your life, you're, yeah. you're like a wise man. Yeah. You're on a rock. Yes. Wisdom comes, right? Yes. You're like a man who built a house on a rock instead of sand. Mm -hmm. Build your house on sand, your man-made kingdoms, they collapse. Yes. Here Jesus says, the kingdom of God is like a stone that if you stumble over it, it'll break you. If it falls on you, it'll crush you. Then in Matthew 11, he says, the kingdom suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Mm -hmm. So what did Jesus mean? Jesus, the nonviolent Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. what, what was he saying? The kingdom comes, and when it comes, it smashes up world views. Yes. It smashes up world systems. Yes. Our self-made ones? And those of man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The 
kingdom coming into the earth is the arrival of Jesus, the king. Yes. And it wreaks havoc on everybody that's opposed to it. Yes. Praise the Lord. So just look what Jesus goes around doing. His kingdom came because the king came, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Where the king is is the kingdom. So he goes about doing this ministry, and it reflects this invasion of you know, invasion yeah. and rescue. Mm -hmm. yeah. The king comes, he invades, and he rescues the captives, mm -hmm. right? He makes sick people well. Yep. He makes paralyzed people get up and move. Yeah. He makes dead people live. Yes. And probably the greatest demonstration of this spiritual invasion, this yes. kingdom coming, is that he goes around casting demons out of people. Yes. Mm. Right? He literally frees them from spiritual possession. Yes. <laughs> he releases the captives as yes. a king issues pardons. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. See, it takes a while to get this because we think of grace as being a pass to just be crazy. Well, I, in a sense, it is. I mean, you, you, you are forgiven no matter what. Mm -hmm. But it's to wake us up yes. to the fact that we've been pardoned. Yes. Past, present, future, it's all under the blood. Uh -huh. The king has come and taken us from captivity uh -huh. and placed us into his reign, into his realm, uh -huh. and pardoned us of everything yes. that was against his kingdom. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Luke chapter 10, verse 18. And it takes a while. Mm -hmm. And I've heard it said, and, I, and it's true, because I experienced it so myself. If you preach grace and grace and grace and grace, people will yeah. usually go to an extreme first. Right. Just the same way you do when you get saved. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I can tell you all kinds. Of, when I first got saved, I started wearing pajamas. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I never wore clothes to bed my wife. I'd been married to her for five years or something when I got saved. So I started wearing pajamas. Well, I don't know. I just, you know, I was so conscious of, you know, religion made me that way. Made, didn't last very long like a lot of the other things that religion did, you know. But I'm just saying, I'm not trying to, you know, make you uncomfortable. It's a little awkward, I understand, but I'm just saying. That's what it does. It can make you so conscious of things that have no relevance whatsoever. You know, but so... Sorry about that, Sally. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as a lightning, as lightning fall from heaven. Yes. This is Jesus talking. Now, this isn't just, you know, the fall of the devil back in the beginning. Amen. But it's in the context here. The disciples are marveling at the miracles they're doing. Uh -huh. You know, even, you know, even the dead are subject to us. They're, you know, they're just freaking out about what they've been out on this mission trip and People are getting healed and people are getting delivered. And, and Jesus responds and he says, he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Amen. So in the context here, he's saying, uh, I gave that guy the boot mm -hmm. a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And his power is subject to mine. Yes. yes. Amen. So that's what the kingdom does, yes. Jody. Just what you were talking about here this morning. Its arrival is violent. It's cataclysmic. Amen. It shakes strongholds. And it puts the fear of God into the rulers of these kingdoms. And religious leaders. Praise the Lord. It knocks out the enemy and it sets the enemy's prisoners free. I mean, think, this is salvation. 
This is what He did. This is what Jesus did. We think, well, it was just this meek guy. He comes along and He dies on a cross and, and we got our sins forgiven. No, He was ushering in a kingdom. A kingdom that had been prophesied thousands of years prior to this. And now it's here and we've made it all about religion and us. And it's no wonder we haven't seen any significant change in the earth's attitudes when it comes to nations. And slavery and all the other... You know, abuse of women. I mean, come on, I'm just I'm not trying to be politically correct here, but I'm just saying just simple things like that. And then we run off into all kinds of craziness thinking that, you know, we're we've reached our potential. We've got as much crap going on in the world today, maybe more than we had 50 years ago. Because there's more of us and less of God. So it knocks the enemy out, sets his captives free. It turns almost everything upside down, which is to say from God's perspective, right side up. Yes. Exactly to what Don was saying. Yeah. See, God looks at this like we look at it to some degree. And we look at it and we go, how in the world yeah. can people actually be for this? Yeah. How can they get elected? To kill more babies. You know, to do whatever other stupid things we hear going on all the time in politics. You know, I'll, I'll just tell you. You know, the, they banned uh, nativity seeds in Washington. Not because of religion. They couldn't find three wise men and a virgin. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But it's the truth. But I mean, that's how idiotic these are. You can't put a Christmas tree up. If you do, you've got to call it a holiday tree. Right? You can't. You, half the stores you go into, they're saying happy holidays. I make a point. I'm, I say, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And you can see, they feel uncomfortable because they could get fired probably if they said Merry Christmas. I'm in there spending money yeah. for Christmas, yeah. not for your holiday, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm going to call it what it is. Yeah. But I'm just saying that's how crazy everything is upside down and backwards. And the, and, and the scripture tells us that. Uh -huh. It said the day will come when we'll call good evil and evil good. And, he, and even and he talks about it in another place. He said, uh, look, I, he said, I had this vision. And it's the slaves are on horseback and the kings are leading the horse. That's us, church. We are the ones that are supposed to be on the horse. And instead of that, we're acting like slaves. We're acting like the servants that are leading the horses around with these morons, amen, who don't even believe, amen, and elevating them and making them something special. Don't get me started. Praise the Lord. But see, he, the, the gospel of the kingdom is supposed to touch the whole man. Yeah. Body, soul, and spirit. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Look at Matthew chapter 6 and 10 through 13. Matthew 6, 10 through 13. Now, if it's not doing that, and the truth is, it isn't in any of us, so we can pick out something that may be a glaring fault in somebody else, but we all got the stuff. You know, we're not, any of us are there. Right. But that's what, that's really what church is supposed to be about, is to get us there. Right. Right? And we do that by just the conversations that I heard here this morning. Yes. They, God. Ding, you know, yes. something goes off in your spirit because you have the same spirit. Yes. So it, like, you relate to it, you connect with it. You know, oh, wait a minute, That's, that makes sense. You know, there's something about that that I get. So thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Praise the Lord. Give it, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, or it's your kingdom. 
and your power and your yes. glory forever. Yes. Amen. Yes. That word evil there confirms the intended reach or uh, effect of God's redemption of humanity, of man. On my earth. Yes. As in heaven. The word evil there represents the entire effect or the entire course of sin on humanity. Uh -huh. Sin being our unbelief or separation from God all the way back. Yeah. And that word evil represents this entire impact or the entire curse of sin. Poneros is the, is the Greek word that's used there. And that word for evil it comes from the word ponos, meaning pain. Mm -hmm. That word comes from the root word penes, meaning poor. So look at it. Evil, sin. Pain, sickness. Poor, poverty. Mm -hmm. Jesus destroyed the power of sin, yes. sickness, yes. and poverty. Yes. And he did it through his redemptive work on the cross. Yes. He brought a kingdom yes. where that junk didn't exist. Yes. Right. Where it doesn't rule, where it doesn't dominate, where it doesn't control, where people 70 years old don't die of cancer. Right. You just get done doing what you're doing yes. and you go, I've had enough. I'm ready to go. Yes. That's the way it's supposed to be. Exactly. We complete our purpose That's right. and we're ready to go. Yeah. No anxiety, no I'm going to worry about the kids or the grandkids or the great-grandkids or great-great-great-grandkids, however what it is. You just get to the place where you go, okay, it's all good. I'm ready to move on. Yes. I've had enough of this. Yes. I'm ready for the next step. Adam and Eve had a commission. And that commission was to subdue the earth. Right? Take dominion. They were without sickness. They were without poverty. And they were without sin. And the, the impact of that kingdom kept them alive for nearly a thousand years. Yes. With all of their human faults and all the other issues, they lived to be old, 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 what we would call really old. Now think about this. When the kingdom really begins to come back in full scale yeah. in the millennium, yes. a person a hundred years old is considered a child. Why? Because there's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no. Oh, they don't die. Right. Exactly. We have been redeemed. Yes. Amen. We've been restored. Yes. To what? To where? Back to God's original purpose. Yes. So why would we expect anything less? Right, exactly. I'll tell you why. Because we let our kingdoms dominate. We give them more validity than we give God. After all, he called this the better covenant. We were given the keys to the kingdom. The keys. I mean, it's one thing for your dad to have a Mercedes or a Bentley or a Corvette or a hot rod or whatever, you know, it's another thing for him to give you the keys. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, my dad drove Cadillacs. He never gave me the keys. I got the keys to the GMC pickup a couple of times, but never the Cadillac. Right. Our dad has it all, and he's given us the keys to it. Yes. Praise the Lord. And that is the authority to trample over all the powers of hell. Amen. Look at Matthew uh, 16, verse 19 again. I'll give you unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, that's dominion, that's authority, It'll be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, it'll be loose in, authority, in heaven. Yes. That's authority. That's heaven and earth authority. Yes. All right? Look at uh, Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. And that, what that tells me is, 
kingdom of heaven has come yes. on my earth. Yes. And I'm aware of it. If I'm aware of it, I can bind and I can loose. So behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. I give unto you. I'm not, I'm going to give it to you. I'm, you. You get it. When you receive the Holy Spirit, when you get born again, you are given the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all, all, all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Praise the Lord. So what's the key to the kingdom? Jesus, the scripture says, he will reign over the house of David, or he will rule as a king in the lineage of David. God even told David, you'll rule forever. In other words, your offspring will always be on the throne. Praise the Lord. There's a key of David, and that's, it's mentioned, look at Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. This is exactly the language Jesus is using when he says, I give you the keys of heaven, whatever you bind, whatever you loose, right? It's exactly the same thing, Isaiah chapter 22 and verse 22. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder. So he shall open and none shall shut. And he shall shut and none shall open. Praise the Lord. Now what does the scripture say? All that the Father has is ours through Christ. That's us. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 9 and 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice. And from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Jesus rules over every kingdom. His kingdom is ever growing, ever increasing. It's a kingdom without end. Revelation 5.10. has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign yes. on the earth. Yeah. You and I have the key, the key to a treasure in earthen vessels. Yes. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yes. The kingdom is in you. Yes. You have the keys. Yes, you. Luke 17, 21. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is in you. Amen? Amen. The key to unlock the kingdom is in you. Amen. The key to your self actualization, the key to your full potential is in you. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Kingdom is the king's domain which implies authority or lordship, uh -huh. rule. The realm of God's dominion, the realm of all sufficiency, the realm called the kingdom is in you. Yes. Hebrews 6.1. Wow. I said last week the, the, the ultimate uh, definition of repentance is to change sides. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about changing your mind and you know so on and so forth, but it's literally changing sides. Mm -hmm. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Yes. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Mm -hmm. Change sides. Yes. Let go of your kingdom and receive the kingdom of God. Yes. Yes. 
leaving, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Hallelujah. Change sides. Yeah. Change our way of thinking until the presence of His kingdom fills our consciousness. Yes. Till we're as aware yes. of His kingdom as we are of the kingdoms of this world. Yes, See, that's the challenge. That's the battle. That's the renewing of the mind is to get us in tune with our true identity. Amen. To get our head and <laughs> wired together, amen, to get connected with our spirit. Amen. It's hard because we live in a world that's just junk. Yes. The devil's attempt is to anchor our affections, anchor our focus to the things that are visible. Yes, he does. Amen. Luke chapter 17, verse 21. And I'm trying this, you know, I'm trying this. And that's why I, I, it, you can seem insensitive to other people when yeah. you don't want to get into yeah. their drama party. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I, it isn't that I don't care. It isn't that I don't have feelings about it. It's just that, hey, I, there's a, there, I can't change that unless I can get this thing right. right. If I can get myself focused into where I'm supposed to be, then we can impact some other things. Right. But as long as all we're doing is wringing our hands about some problem, we're not getting anywhere. We're just re going over the same ground, not getting ahead, not, not really focused on what it is we're trying to do. So neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Yes. If the kingdom is here and now, Amen. and we have it in order to acknowledge it, we have to understand that it's in the invisible realm. I know there's stuff in there, but I don't know what it is. I, I don't know where it is. I, I can't see it, right? I know. But I know that it's there because yes. I'm still upright. You know, I'm still moving around here. Yes. So just like in the natural, there is a kingdom in here. Yes. And I can't see it, but I have to be just as sure of its reality yes. as I am the other things in order for it to function. Yes. Praise the Lord. So it's... We have to acknowledge that it's here. If it's here and if it's here now, then it, obviously it's in the invisible realm or we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Right. right? All right. So look at Matthew chapter 10 and verse 7. And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So being at hand is saying it's in the invisible, but it's within reach. It's, you can't see it, but it's at hand. It's close enough that you can reach out. Yeah. You, can, you can get it from here. Yeah. You can experience it from here, right? Yeah. All right, 2 Corinthians 4, 18. <clears throat> While we look not at things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. They're, king, they're his kingdom. The things we see are our kingdoms. Yeah. The things we don't see, that's his kingdom. Right. Amen? All right, John 3.3. 3. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Why? Because if you're not born again, you don't have the spirit. Right. And you see this by, your, by the spirit. Yes. Okay? So what's unseen can only be realized through repentance or through changing sides, yep. changing kingdoms. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You can have the kingdom, but if you're never going to operate right. from there, exactly. you might as well not have it because you're only going to get what you get in this kingdom. Right. But you can get a lot of stuff in this kingdom if you're willing to work hard or, yeah. or, or just be really sly and slick and, and smart or, or manipulative or, yeah. or cruel or whatever. I mean, you can get stuff, yeah. but it'll never satisfy you. Right. It'll never fulfill you. You'll never reach your true potential exactly. outside of His kingdom. Right. Yes. Amen? So if you don't change the way that you perceive things, yeah. you'll live your whole life thinking what you see in the natural is the superior reality. Yeah. Without changing the way you think, you'll never see the world that's right in front of you. Exactly. That's at hand. 
Jesus says, it's my world and it fulfills every dream you've ever dreamed. Yes. yes. And I brought it with me. Yes. Everything Jesus did here on earth, he did by drawing from that superior reality. Yes. Yes. He was a man. He didn't do it as God. He did it as a man drawing from the kingdom of God. He drew from that superior reality, from that kingdom mm -hmm. that had come on his earth yes. as it was in heaven. Yes. Daniel chapter 2, 44 through 47 again. Wrap up here. We only got a couple more scriptures. Daniel 2, 44 to 47. Again, and Daniel said, In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. That kingdom is never going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all of these other kingdoms, all these other people's kingdoms, and it'll stand forever. Mm -hmm. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces, the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Then the king of Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and worshiped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth, it is that your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, and revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Amen? So the kingdom of God, the manifest presence of God, Christ in you, the kingdom in you, the stone of stumbling and the rock of crushing is our foundation, the rock of our salvation. The rock of our kingdom. Yes. The foundation of a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Right. That goes on forever. An ever increasing yep. kingdom. Alright. Wrap it up. with Go back to the first scriptures. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3. 14 through 18. But their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Why? Because the kingdom hasn't come. That's why when Jesus hit, will, will, you break, will the kingdom be revealed now? Will it, will it come? And he tells them, nobody knows when the kingdom comes except God. Because it's up to you. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil will be taken away. When you turn to his kingdom, you can start seeing some things that you never saw before. Now, the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Right? We're set free. Yes. The captives are no longer right. in captivity. Amen. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into that same image yes. from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Be not conformed to this world. Praise the Lord. But be transformed. Change sides by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove the good, the acceptable, and perfect kingdom of God. Yeah. Amen? Amen? That's the challenge. Yeah. If there's a discipline in Christianity, this is it. Uh -huh. Get this thing uh -huh. to agree yeah. with yes. the heart, with the yes. spirit. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We, we can do it. If we couldn't do it, he wouldn't have told us to do it. He doesn't tell us when it'll happen because it happens to us individually. But as we all kind of start moving to that, have you noticed you get a plan and when people get on board with that plan, things start happening quicker, yep. faster, because it's coordinated, because yes. people have got a focus. They're, they're looking yes. at the same end. They're yes. looking for the same thing to, you know, yes. be realized. Yep. When we all got our own little mission, our own little agenda, our own little kingdom, right. it's all about me yep. and my kingdom, right. right? But it's when it's his kingdom, yes. and we recognize every one of us are enhanced by this kingdom. Every one of us are blessed by this kingdom. Every one of us are healed and delivered. See, we get pieces and bits and tastes of it, and it just makes us crazy excited 
a healing, a, a, a financial breakthrough, a, a, you know, a revelation, a, whatever it might be. And we go, wow, man, this is outrageous. And then we go back and settle for the old junk in our kingdom. So we've got to let go of one to get the other. It's just always the same thing. What do you want the most? Praise the Lord. How, talk about an impact. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. We can do this. We can heal the sick. Sure we, can. we can cast out demons. We can yes. raise the dead. Yes. Uh, that's, that's hard to even say, let alone. Why? Because we've got hundreds and hundreds of years of embalming. Yeah. <laughs> and, and burying and, you know, dead rituals and funerals and yeah. that's what we know that's what we're familiar with but this is the truth Amen. we hear cancer and it's a freak show why because the world system doesn't have a cure for cancer but God's got a cure and it's his kingdom get in the kingdom guess what in the kingdom there isn't any cancer I, I got a job and I only make X number of dollars an hour. How am I ever going to pay off the house? How am I ever going to buy a house? How am I ever going to ha have, you know, financial freedom? You won't, not in this world. I'm just being honest. Not in this kingdom. You can't because it's subject to the laws of this kingdom. But if you can get into his kingdom, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He's got it all. He can pay off everything and give you more. Mm -hmm. He can do it. But not by the rules of, it, of no. your kingdom. Nope. It's the way it is. And whenever we have stepped into that kingdom mm -hmm. by faith, it's been proven to us. Yep. Yep. But it's there all the time. Yes. Available always. Yes. Just change sides. Yes. Praise the Lord. I let you meditate on this. Think about it. Mm -hmm. And act on it. Yes. Hey, the f old Chinese proverb, the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. Yes. Yes, it does. Sometimes the journey itself is so daunting that we never take the first step. We just think, I'll never make a thousand miles. Yeah. So why go? This you can do. Yeah. But you've got to step out yes. in faith yes. and begin to act yeah. on it. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Yes. All is well. Amen. Say, all is well with me. Amen. In the kingdom, it's all good all the time. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you for your patience. We were a little long this morning, but God is good. And in eternity, there isn't any time. Praise the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.